Hello, good day to everyone, and I welcome you to the another episode on mold flow tips and workflow. In this episode, I want to go back to the little basics, try to understand more about the you know the results which you day to day review it and interpret it. I was just thinking to myself that is there a better way to interpret these results or should we continue to do so what we are doing it there have been continuously announcements happening uh, in the solution and these results are trying to tell us in much detail let's review it i'm going to review only like two results uh, particularly which you refer it more often and uh, yes if you're guessing it I'm, I'm trying to say about is a fill time and the temperature flow front let's begin with it I have a simple geometry and uh, I meshed it as a three-dimensional mesh applied a gate location at one end it's a unidirectional flow that I want to do it for this part and the thickness of this part is around say 2 mm or so uh, and uh, there could be a few thicker sections in this part I'm using a generic polypropylene material uh, so not much uh, of the material has to do it as we interpret the result but one of the things that probably like to highlight is the ejection temperature the mold surface temperature that we are going to remain you know constant uh, as we fill the part and the melt temperature of around like 220 which we are going to refer it as we try to interpret more of the results right okay and in process conditions I have kept everything as uh, automatic uh, yeah and of course so if you are using the latest version then uh, we also have option of putting the automatic pack and hold controller also in this case I have put the you know packing as like the default of the previous legacy of 0 80% and 10 seconds for 80% or so let's begin with the first results that I want to refer is the fill time and use you go and try to open the fill time it would be much like in you know, a shaded part of of it and in this case it's fills the part around like 0.7 seconds and we can see the uh, the you know the rainbow type of it and we can run the animations carefully observe the animations I would always recommend that putting the animation to the hundred friends particularly gives the best information about whether there is any imbalance in the filling pattern or so of course this part is not exactly a symmetric uh, as you can see this has a little bit of different volume on one of the side and but obvious this gives that I have a, a bit of the difference in filling the volume of this area very better on this one not exactly the same yeah more or less. so yes that's what I, I try to find it out I often use the result as a histogram uh, if you're not using it try using it it's available from version 2024 and if you are using 2025 then you should have access to it it's basically gives the information about how much portion of the part is it the equally part is filling if there is something that is hesitation can be quickly be observed from the from the histogram plot as well because some portion of volume will take a little longer time to fill but that's the best way to observe that is with the help of contour there is a single contour we'll talk about that and there is a normal contour instead of shedding I will always try to put the number of contours as 60 I try to use it this because that's give a better information about any hesitation in the part or so closer the contours are there that means there's a hesitation and the more spread out contours that specifically in the gate location area means the 
flow is trying to speed up and this also gives the information that whether there will be a some white patches or the flow marks issues that also gives understanding so look for the areas which are having a little bigger contours or the distance between the contours is high there's a possibility of having the uh, the flow marks issue when wherever there is a problem with an ununiformity of the flow possibility it results into the flow marks on to the part there is no as such a direct results which will give a understanding about the flow marks or the white patches but these results are trying to tell you and we should be you know able to understand from this if there are any potential issues okay i talked about the min and max as well so this gives the information which is the minimum portion to fill or the you know the minimum in the sense the earliest portion to fill and the the last one that gives the maximum particularly depending upon the what results you are looking for so and the most important part i did talked about something called as a contour and the single contour right i so many times people ask me what for this be used now this part has a cut out over here right let's see whether the single contour is able to understand us basically it is trying to tell us how the flow is moving uh, uh, with the help of a wave that's wave in the sense the flow front and you can see that as the wave goes and meet it meets over here it has already touched to the end and these portions are yet to be filled and there is a, a strong weld line happening over here so i need not really have to look at the my weld line results but obvious i can go and look at for the weld line results and when i'm talking about the weld line results often people still go and look for the weld line as a legacy nothing harm in it particularly this gives a much surface information about the weld line i usually nowadays because the 3d weld line is much better to understand i try to use it okay this is the 3d weld line and i have changed its default color from the green to the single color of black so that gives me understanding within the surface how the weld line is getting form um, rather than just looking at the sorry within the thickness rather than just looking at and there is also a weld line called as the weld line surface movement actually so this forms and then the weld line moves so i would refer you know I would encourage or recommend using these two results of the weld line, weld line surface formation 3D and weld line surface uh, movement because during the packing stage, uh, two or three percent of the polymer is getting added and that smooths the weld line. Uh, pretty much on to these, but there is also other way to view the uh, fill time other than the shader. I showed it to you and. And we will explore more much uh, into detail as we move move further as well. And the temperature results. That's what I was referring it to. It particularly these two results today. I want to review it. And what temperature results is trying to talk or interpret is that during the flow, temperature at flow front is a result at the surface. It's not throughout the thickness. It's not averaged through the thickness. Okay. It just instantaneously as the polymer reaches it's it's the sh it is showing it now what it, we are trying to see over here at the gate location particularly at what the polymer is getting poured is 220 okay it's 20 over here and as it reaches over here there is a rise of 1.3 degree or so now what is the implication of this one um there is a blue green and red patches of course it is showing but i could see there is a patchiness over here right and i could able to see the patchiness because my legend scale is small but if this would have been bigger then i would have not able to see this patchiness. so always try to fit in the scale in appropriate way if you really wants to see the surface defects as well because of the variation in the temperature in the part now this variation in the temperature in the part could be caused because of the shearing at the narrow sections or there is a fast movement of the polymer 
as it rushes into the cavity for the time being let's understand this is a rise in the temperature because of the shearing now there's a better way to visualize this is in the optional setting uh, I usually go and instead of looking at the color map I will go and look at the uh, cool to warm color this also gives the information that hey these are the areas cool means these are the lower regions or the you know the temperature which is lesser in the in the in the legend and those areas which are hot or particularly at high has been denoted with and you know the red color close to that so is there a better way to visualize this yes so if you switches to the grayscale this gives a better understanding that hey I would able to see the patchiness in the part and this is particularly in this area where I could able to see the patchiness yes this is a area where I would be able to see a little patchiness not necessarily but if something is going to happen I would able to see a little bit of the surface region. now this is not because of the flow this is because of the temperature variations the basic thing remains is that there is a shearing because of the flow and that causes the rise in the temperature or so um, I can continue to talk and it's almost like in 10 minutes plus so think over these two results and next time probably you spend more time on reviewing these results and I'll talk to you again with some more results as we uh, continue this series thank you for your time have a great day